Hello, my fellow gnomes. Welcome back. A Teddy video. It has been almost two years since we've talked about Teddy here on the channel, so well due a revisit. And I think he's probably due a bit of context as well. If you don't care about that, then you can skip ahead till we get into the fun bit. But I want to sort of fill you guys in with where we're at. Now, I think back when I originally released this, I put it the game out and I said, if we reach 1 million visits, which we've kind of passed since then. Amazing. Thank you so much to everyone that's played. Uh, I think we're now at over 600 million visits. Um, but I said, if we hit 1 million, just one, then I would open source it. I would allow anyone to copy the game. And a lot of people said, you really shouldn't do that. What, why are you doing that, right? Um, now, I did that for a few reasons. One is because I really believe in people being able to learn game development, learn coding. And you can't do that in a vacuum. You've got to learn from others. And, you know, it's a great honor if I can be part of that process in helping you guys learn because I've learned from many online resources myself. Uh, of course, Teddy started off as a tutorial series, so it only seemed natural since I discontinued the tutorial series to say, hey, um, here's the game, finish where we left off. But of course, one of the issues we did get with that is we did get a lot of copies, right? You put something out for free, make it able to be copied, people are going to copy it, right? That's fine. I don't mind that in of itself. But what I did take issue to is people uploading the whole thing one for one using my thumbnails, uh, all my assets, but even my YouTube videos, right? Which weren't supposed to be um, open source in any way, but people pasted all that and said, oh, Here's our version of Teddy, and obviously they don't disclaim it at all, and they're just trading off my IP as far as I'm aware. So I saw that as pretty fraudulent and, and poor play. And then the problem with how I open sourced it previously is it wasn't even that easy to copy. So for the new beginners that wanted to take the code and sort of dive in and make their own game, it wasn't even that easy. So what I've done here is I've stripped things back, made it a lot more simple to edit, and hopefully it's gonna allow you guys to actually make your own Teddy games if you want and learn a bit about how this game works. Uh, now there's actually been quite a significant rewrite of the code um, since those original videos, which were years ago now, but enough rambling. Let's dive right into the project. So here we are in Teddy Kit RBXL, and I'm actually signed in on a, a new account, so I'm not even on Gnome Code here. This is just a file, as it will be from the website. I'll leave a link to that down in the description for you to download yourself. Um, and let's just check this thing out. So if we go and hit play straight away, well, we'll notice we're actually going to get a bunch of errors down here. So it's just going to keep loading forever, and we're going to get warnings, and we can't actually play this thing. So we've got to go and click publish to Roblox and then we just call it uh, our Teddy test and we can just go and create that thing. That's fine. And then once this has created, we should then have it uploaded as a proper Roblox game place rather than just a private file. So studio is going to reload for us, hopefully. Um, and here we go. Okay, so it's now a a game place, you'll probably see some errors about sounds, uh, but if we play now, it's going to warn us again. So if we just go to game settings and then down to security and enable that API access, that's all we have to do. Click save. And then if we click play now, thing will load and there we go. We're in the game. You'll notice there's not actually any sound in here or anything, but we can go in and we can see we've got a, a shop, we've got some teddy bears, and we've got some traps. It's not quite as full as in the main game because I've I've taken a few things out just to make it a bit more easy to work with, right? Um, and then we can come back and we can hit play, and we can even go in and play the game straight away. So we've got a test map, and we've got player and AI. We'll go for AI, and there we go into the game, a little basic cutscene. Um, I'll just skip through all of this. And, and here is the map, right? So there's not um, there's not too much happening. You will notice that there's no animations. Well, there's an idle animation. There it is. 
but there's no there's no walk animation and if we look at Teddy uh, he hasn't got any animation either right uh, there is some sound in the game um, but there was no sound for the lobby so we're gonna need to do a little bit of customizing now I should point out at this point that there is a readme uh, file in here so if you ever want to say oh how do I do this well come and read it we've got what 117 lines of information for you in here on animations, custom monsters, data stores, which is the thing that I just showed you how to do, uh, maps, uh, we've got monetization, music, shop items, all sorts of good stuff. So we're not actually going to go and set up all the animations in this video, um, but if you wanted to set that up, well, let's just have a look. Character animations. Uh, I, so I'm using my own animation script, uh, which is a, another video here on the channel showing you how to get footsteps working, that sort of thing. Uh, but if you want to do it, then you have to go to the animation script and then replace the ID. So if we go into start the character scripts and we'll find this animate script. And then if we go in here and we scroll down to line 162, there we go. You'll see run and then this, this one ending in 11. And this is my custom animation, but you'll need to replace this one with your own. Watch that video to understand it a bit better. But let's just go and play about with the, the map, for instance. So we'll go and drag our test chapter into the workspace. Uh, let's go and zoom over there. And here it is, right? So if we wanted, maybe we want to add in like an extra door, for instance. Uh, well, the good thing is, this is pretty easy to do. So we can actually just copy and paste these. And they're already set up with collection service. Again, I've got a video on that you can check out. Uh, so it means that there's no scripts inside any of these objects, um, but because they're already assigned as a tagged object, if we uh, scroll down, you see tags, click door, which means that it will work straight out of the box. So then if we wanted to add a sort of wall in here, and then if I take the map, pop it back in the maps folder and click play again, there we go. We see we've got the extra doors and we can interact with them as we would expect which maybe makes it a little bit easier to run away from the uh, the teddy bear. Maybe. If we want to edit the cutscene, then we'll go into the cutscenes folder in Replicator Storage. Uh, you've got to have the cutscene folder have exactly the same name as your map. Uh, and then we have an intro, an outro, and the exit. Exits if they escape. Outro is basically if they run out of time. Uh, and then the intro here it is. So we can see all that text that we saw flying on the screen um, earlier. Here it is, we can edit it. So if we didn't want it to say a demo template, we could say, hello, YouTube, right? And then if I click play now, and there we go, hello, YouTube. Now you'll notice all of this cutscene logic is using something called the cutscene module. Uh, that is in the starter player scripts, I believe, down here. Yeah, we've got the cutscene controller. And I'll just open that up so you can get an idea of some of the, the methods that are available. Um, so we've got a, a get model, setup character, position rig, animate rig, move rig, right? That's what I was demoing at the start of that one, where there's the gnome and the baby that both move forward. And then we also have uh, things to position and then tween the camera along, all that sort of stuff. Again, you can, you can dive into all of this in your own time. Uh, if you wanted to start changing stuff about in the shop, well, all you have to do is you go to replicatedstorage.shop and then you'll see we've got all of these module scripts in here. So if I go to into accessory list and let's say I think brown messy hair, that's 15 teddy tickets at the moment. I don't think that's enough. So I want to boost that up to 1500 teddy tickets. Uh, well, now if I go back in and play into the shop, we can see brown messy is now 1500 teddy tickets, which is quite pricey. The red mohawk is looking the better deal there. Uh, if you want to change the color of this, uh, like the shop mannequin, for instance, we can do that. That's actually this dummy object here. So if we go and we made his head color red, for instance, and we rejoin and look at that shop now, there we go. We've got red head. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but this is the kind of stuff you can do. Uh, obviously, custom monsters you can add in. They will just go inside the Teddy folder here. And then you've just got to add a little reference in the character list module if you want to sell them in the shop. Uh, you'll notice I have these limited edition ones too. 
So festive is currently off sale. That's false and the limited edition is true. Uh, that's because it's an unlockable. So if I'm here, you'll see actually festive. I can't buy him. I can't do anything with him. Uh, so how you would assign him is if we go into our server script. So we have the bindables and we have this like award badge bindable, for instance. And if we go into data logic, you see, I've got this purchase item method, right? Um, I check if the player owns the item and then I take away the pieces eventually and I just assign it to their session data. Well, you could create a custom method to assign a specific monster or hat or anything like that to the player without them having to go through the purchase logic. Now, one thing to be aware of in this uh, Teddy Kit is it doesn't have any monetization features at all. So if you are wanting to uh, copy this and make a very lazy copy like people did last time, well, you can't actually uh, do that. None of these are set up, these pieces. Uh, they don't do anything. Uh, if you want to add monetization to your game, then there's loads of resources on my wiki and so not my wiki on the Roblox wiki and on my YouTube channel. And you'll probably find it's pretty easy to uh, integrate into this code if you know what you're doing. But I've sort of left that out to keep this as a minimal kit. But here we go. This is the Teddy kit. Uh, make sure to have a look at the readme. That will really tell you everything you want to do. It saves me rambling for too long on this video. Uh, but there we go. There we have it. Uh, go and have fun. Uh, if you found it useful, if you make something cool out of it, then please let me know. It's always uh, really interesting to see what people are making. And uh, until then, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!